Welcome to Retire Hour, the weekly show discussing income planning, investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Complete retirement education. Hear from our financial advisors, CPA, estate planning attorney, and Medicare advisor every week. This is Retire Hour. Welcome into Retire Hour, the weekly show that helps you stay up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. I'm your host, Matt Goolsby, and we've got a full show for you this week. We're going to go to our advisor panel here uh, in the first half of the show, and then don't forget to check out the second half where we bring in one of our Medicare advisors. We're going to have a paralegal on this week because Gerald's on vacation. And then we'll be wrapping up uh, the show, of course, as always, with Joshua Sakura, our lead CPA with Market Tax Services, kind of piggybacking on uh, on a listener question that we got. Um, it's kind of we've been doing this a couple weeks in a row now, where we get a listener question, we ask the advisor, but then really the advisor says, "Well, I need to need to ask the CPA, or I need to ask one of our attorneys, or I need to ask the Medicare guy," and that's that's not uncommon. That's that's why we work together as a team. But we're going to go up to Kansas City. Speaking of team, we're going to talk to one of our team members up there, Jonathan McCoy, lead advisor with Market Advisor Group Kansas City. And coming up there from looks like your 95th Street office there at 95th and Null. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you got a story this week of someone that really, um, really, it, it has a happier ending, but it was someone that came to you with some concerns, right? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. A lot of uh, these con- conference room interactions can be interesting from a, you know, from a body language standpoint. You really never know how comfortable or uncomfortable someone's going to be opening themselves up for the first time, you know, from a financial perspective with a professional like ourselves. So uh, David, in this case, had actually been referred to us by a gentleman that we met with a couple of years back. You know, they're both kind of on a similar career um, timeline. Um, and David's really just getting the idea that his employer's probably not heading the direction that he wants to uh, stick around for to see where this wagon ride is going to end. You know, he's been there for 41 years. And earlier this year, they already announced cutbacks and restrictions in terms of payout options on their pension. And if you think about it, over a 41-year career, those pension benefits can be can become, you know, significant. So I think that was the, the original red flag that kind of let uh, David and a lot of his coworkers understand the fact that, you know, the direction this company is heading is not necessarily going to be to our financial benefit. So, you know, let me let me see if I'm following along here. David, he's been working for this company for 40 plus years. He's been socking away, doing what he does day in, day out, week in, week out, year after year, saving for retirement. He's getting closer to that deadline or maybe that date as far as the finish line in his head as far as when he wants to retire. And now the rules are changing on him. Yeah. And it, you know, it's, it's obviously tricky and it's scary. And I, ultimately I bring up the body language and really it seemed like David was almost just kind of frozen in space the first couple of meetings, you know, and, you know, we're trained to ask all the pertinent questions, you know, who are you working with a financial advisor? Have you talked to any tax professionals about the implications on your 401k? Have you talked to your pension department to see what your filing options are and what those benefits are going to look like? Uh, have you thought about your health care and health insurance needs? You know, what about your beneficiaries? What's going to happen to your assets? You know, if something were to happen to you or even your wife uh, sometime shortly after you retire. And, you know, a lot of times those are things that are not fun to talk about, but it brings in those conversations around how do we get our team involved in this financial planning portion of the process. But for David in particular, it was more, I got to find a way out. And really that was, I think, what had him frozen from a decision-making process. But I wanted to reiterate to him that, yes, we understood that this was maybe a, a shorter timeline than he was comfortable working with but also that we didn't necessarily have to rush through the decision-making process. I find a lot of people uh, wind up feeling like a square peg in a round hole with a lot of financial advisors when they show up and immediately start getting investment recommendations. Like, no, we've got to get to understand what your financial needs are to understand if retirement is even an option for you right now. That, you know, that's well said there. The You have a lot of probably uh, other financial advisors out there, and I'm not trying to talk ill of them, but because they don't have the other team members in-house – their process probably is a little different, and and you know I've heard some of the stories as similar as I'm sure you have, where someone just tries to get something. You know, you don't want to buy anything, do you? You don't want to buy anything, do you? You don't want to buy anything, and that's not how our process goes, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a lot of questions. Like I said, part of it was just I took it upon myself as a challenge to get David to open up. You know, ultimately, what truly was his concern outside of just the fact that you know financially, whatever happens with his company could severely negatively impact his retirement. You know, it was above and beyond that. And he he kept going back to the idea that, you know, I just want to know how much money I can make on what I've saved and what my pension will pay me. I want to know how much it's going to cost me in taxes. 
And it wasn't him bringing those things to the table. It was through this line of questioning. You know, have you thought about the tax implications? Have you looked at what those income payout options are? And, you know, as he was saying no, I would give him a, li- a to-do list of, okay, let's go home. Let's research. Let's take a look at your pension benefit website. Next time we sit down, we're going to call the pension uh, line together. We're going to ask all the pertinent questions. And I can be there to interpret, you know, sort of the the financial jargon that is often used by a lot of these companies because he was looking at me almost cross-eyed several times in these phone calls that you know he just didn't know you know what to ask how to interpret the information and how to how to think of that in terms of all right what does this mean in terms of money in the bank you know i'm used to living on a paycheck am i going to have enough coming in in retirement and once we distilled it down to just the simplicity of that conversation it really made him much more comfortable with the process but you know it, it was our challenge to be asking those questions along the way well, and, and I'm I'm um, I'm smiling because uh, you know we we do those phone calls all the time with people. We we'll get on the conference phone and in, in the conference room, and we'll call whether it's uh, someone's lost a spouse and they're trying to get a death benefit out, or uh, maybe move their their former spouses or, or uh, passed away spouse. Excuse me, I don't know the, the word there, uh, but you you can help them transfer that retirement account to their name, or or you call up this pension company. A lot of the average person out there, they don't speak this non-qualified and, and survivor and all these different options in this. It's almost like we have a different language in this industry, right? Yeah, you throw in life with period certain and all these different survivorship options, especially where it's, you know, not only do I want to know what does this mean for me, what does this mean for all my loved ones as well? Because that was, you know, his pension in this case was really a significant portion of his retirement portfolio. And when they sent those letters out to their employees earlier in the year that, hey, your, your pension – it's not necessarily being cut in half, but you're going to have access to half of what you thought you were going to have access to, and the rest is going to be paid out over the remainder of your life because essentially this pension fund is underfunded. Mm. And it, you know, it we've I've seen these stories so many times that you know last year a couple of employers here in the Kansas City area wind up going bankrupt, and people that were right on that, you know, within a week or even two weeks of retiring just wound up a couple of days late in terms of you know when those bankruptcy filings came through and it it really can throw a, a massive wrench into the retirement planning mix you know it's not always as simple as hey you know september 1st of this year i want that to be my last or my first day of retirement we're going to roll the 401k over we're going to start the pension we're going to start social security health insurance is going to kick right in it's just going to be flip a switch and we're retired and i think that you know when you start to think about the tall hill that is you know retirement to climb it it helps to have you know you think of a sherpa giving you giving you guide through you know climbing a mountain not to say that we are you know god's gift to retirement planning because there is no perfect way to do all of this but ultimately like you said even from a jargon and a verbiage standpoint if we can help understand help you understand what your options are and this is you know from the get-go we tell people whether you end up working with us or not because your option is always to walk out, say, you know, unfortunately, this isn't going to be a good fit. And sometimes we recognize that the way that we do things for our clients is not a perfect fit for everyone. But we've got to identify where is the right area for us to help, where is the right area for us to step away and and, and leave people to their own devices in some circumstances. But that that interpretation of the jargon is, is so important. Well, I'm glad you were there to help Daniel. And if you don't have someone that can be there to help you speak that language, help you with your forms, navigate that way, or like Jonathan said, be that Sherpa for you in, in, as you transition into retirement, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or you can hop on over to that website, retirehour.com, check out past episodes, or submit a question. We've got a question coming up next. Or you can book that complimentary visit with this complete retirement team in any of our offices across Kansas City or Wichita. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with that listener question right after this. Enjoy Retire Hour? Like us on Facebook for highlights and clips from the show. Go to facebook.com slash retire hour or visit retirehour.com for more info. I need a place to go to see about my investments. Ask my friends if they know about holistic retirement. Everything in one place. Estates, taxes, and Medicare. People meeting face to face. Advisors to help me get there. At Market Advisory Group. Retirement under one roof. At Market Advisory Group. We're invested in you.
Welcome back into Retire Hour. Well, I was mentioning there before the break that you can go to our website, retirehour.com, and submit a listener question. And we pick up listener questions from the home shows, the trade shows that we do, going out there and seeing you guys in public. That's great. Like engaging with you guys. Or you can submit them on the website. Well, this listener comes in from a gal named Charity. And I, I say a gal named Charity. I had to say this earlier because when I was talking with one of our you guys about this before the show, you're like, no. What? <laughs> you guys thought it was a charity. No, her name is Charity. The okay. person submitting the question, her name is Charity. And her question is, is when do I pull from CAPERS, which is, you know, the uh, the Kansas Public Employees Retirement System. Right. And you and I were just talking here in between uh, Jonathan's segment and mine, or yours here, that there's a couple different systems to capers and we didn't really know which one she was talking about here. So right. w- w- what's coming to your mind, Larry Clefcorn, an advisor with market advisory Group Wichita, when charity asks, when do I pull from capers? Yeah. And, um, that could be meant in a number of ways. So if she were sitting here with us, that would be the first thing we would do is we would query as far as, you know, what exactly her question is, what she means. Um, But, and most people probably know this, Charity probably knows this, is that it's an eight, it's a point system is the way they use it. And so once you reach your 85 points, um, you can, and you're 55 years old, you can go ahead and, and start your, your capers. Now, um, you know, some people might want to retire initially without starting capers, and that is going to depend. That's an answer for capers in terms of, or a question for capers to give you that answer in terms of can you defer it. But um, most people, I will say, don't come into it thinking they want to defer it. They're no. thinking they want to take it. Yeah, they're looking, hey, when yeah. as soon as can I take it? Right. And I think that kind of goes to her question. And so if you're talking about the, the, the pension kind of plan to CAPERS, not just the retirement savings plan to CAPERS, there are, like you said, the 85 comes into play, but you can also roll a portion out of that. And we were just yes. talking with Jonathan, an advisor in Kansas City, about how that client had access to some, some of that, that person's pension. Right. But there's things we caution about that, right? Yeah, there are. Um, you know, you want to make sure that if you do select to take part of it lump sum, um, you want to make sure it comes to you in the way that you really want it <laughs> because they'll be glad to just go ahead and cut so, a check yeah. straight to you and deposit an ACH into your bank. They'll mm-hmm. be glad to do that. I'm not so sure uh, you'll be prepared for the taxes that is going to hit you all at once and really affect your um, your situation. And there's n- no way actually to undo it once you've do it once you've done it. Interesting fact, uh, you're actually jarring my memory. I've met with someone, it was probably ever a bit of two or three years ago, where they did that. Uh, they didn't withhold the taxes, and they that was all they had. They spent it, and they had to set up a tax payment plan going forward. So you're right. You yeah. want to make sure you receive that in the right way, and I like how you put that, the way you want to receive it. But mm-hmm. sometimes you don't know the right way you should receive it because of the tax rules and the different Mm -hmm. industry terms. We were talking about that with Jonathan in the previous segment. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is why we have the full team available to come in and help that type of scenario and give you the best counsel. Uh, But again, our counsel is going to be based on what your desire is. And um, so the other option, of course, to receiving it lump sum and having to pay taxes on it right away is you can take that lump sum and do a tax-free rollover and, and make it an IRA. Now, um, uh, the payout portion is pretty generous. Um, so, you know, the, if, if you're wanting to have that lump sum to be there as a nest egg, emergency fund, payoff, some debts with part of it, uh, those sorts of things. That's what it's ideal for in that scenario. And then you're only paying taxes on the portion you need as you're taking it. Yeah, it helps you control, I mean, how much you take out. So what you're saying there is, you know, if they give you, I think they give you up to a 50%, you Mm -hmm. can roll out to 50% out. And they normally do that over the summer, you know, have you put in your Mm -hmm. paperwork and it comes in around June, July-ish. Usually first payment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... um, 
So then if you, you know, say you had access to, you know, 75,000, mm -hmm. then you can you take out 10,000, you have more mm -hmm. control on when you're taking that right. out. But like you mentioned, when me and you were talking about this this morning, when we were talking about this question before the show, it has a payout of almost like 10%. Yeah. So most of the time, I can probably count the fact that I've talked more people out of rolling money out than I've talked people or we worked with people rolling money out of it because yeah. that payout rate is so so attractive there. Yeah. And, you know, you would take, you would opt for the lump sum if you have special purposes for it, yeah. you know. And um, every person is individual. This goes back to that thumbprint mentality we have. Everyone deserves their own custom-made plan and so forth. Well, and, you know, one of the things we really haven't talked about is tax considerations. So we probably should bring in one of our CPAs to talk about this That's right. at the end of the show, because mm -hmm. you and I both know there's a very important tax consideration here yes. that if you're not aware of, and ironically enough, bless this gal's heart, I had another gal come in about two weeks ago. She didn't know that, and she mixed the funds. Mm. So we'll, we'll be yeah. talking about that here a little bit later. But, guys, yeah. do you have a team that you can – or did you want to add something there? No. Okay. I'm, I'm do you good. have a team that you can reach out to <laughs> when questions like this come up? Because if you don't, most of the time you'll figure out you've missed something or you, you overlooked something or maybe even you weren't aware of something and you hurt yourself drastically. You need to reach out to us, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833 833- 888-4687, or you can hop on over to our website, retirehour.com. Check out past episodes, subscribe to the podcast, or submit your listener question, just like Charity did today. And Charity, I'd encourage you to come in because there's some more details going on here that we really want to want to help you with this question because uh, you could you could really make some bad decisions here on on this uh, pension or in capers that we don't want to we don't want that to happen to you. Well, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more right after this. Want more Retire Hour? Visit retirehour.com where you can catch up on past episodes, learn more about the team, and find a complete list of showtimes and stations near you. Go to retirehour.com. I'm Matt Goolsby. I'm your host this week. Uh, you know, we're a financial advisory firm that helps people with the retirement planning, but we don't just stop with retirement planning. We take it a step further. We do the tax planning with our CPAs at Market Tax Services. We work with our estate planning attorneys at Eidelman Law Firm to make sure that you're doing everything uh, as possible uh, for your situation or maybe what your objectives are that you want to achieve with your estate plan. Of course, our healthcare advisors over at Market Medicare Advisors that help review your health plans and your, your ever-changing prescriptions or, or as you age and you go through retirement and your plans change, they help you stay up to date on that. And they help you with open enrollment and making sure that you're on the right plan that's going to cover you and not have an expensive medical expense or, or a surprise later in the year. We work together as that team to help people have a peaceful retirement as far as a peace of mind retirement knowing that they have a team they can rely on when tax issues come up or estate planning or legal issues or health care or financial issues i want to talk about something this week where uh it was kind of interesting i'm not sure this advisor this other advisor scrubbed their list very well but they this other advisor in town in wichita mailed out a letter looking to recruit cpas and i think that's good because they're starting to see just like we are you need tax advice with your investment advice. And I thought it was interesting they mailed this letter to some of our CPAs. I didn't, maybe they're maybe they're trying to think of some of our CPAs aren't aren't satisfied here with market tax services, but that's not the case. But I think I want to highlight in this letter they talk about how your tax information is your business, not ours. And I can see where they're getting at. They, th they don't think they need to know your tax situation, but I, I guess I'll pose the question to you guys, the listeners and the viewers. If I, as your advisor, don't know your tax situation, how can I really be an effective advisor for you? Whether it's when to start Social Security, because there's tax, there's tax implications there and, of course, tax questions that go along with that. 
or maybe how much you should take out from your retirement account as far as um, is for, for not to run out of money, not to spend too much money, but and then also the tax implications there as far as tax withholdings. Of course, your health care, your Medicare options, well, if I take too much money out or I send you too much money, I need to be aware of where those limits are and coordinate with your health care advisor because you could trigger IRMA expenses, income-related monthly adjustment amounts, where they charge you more for your Medicare based on what your income was several years ago. That's something that catches a lot of people off guard because they don't realize they've done it until after they've triggered that event and then several years goes by. But we often will ask the question, is, is watching Irma, is that something really, is that your financial advisor's responsibility? Is that your tax person's responsibility to tell you, hey, you're getting close to Irma, you, you wanna make sure you don't take out too much money here? Or maybe is it your Medicare, your healthcare person's responsibility? Really, you could argue it's, it's all their responsibility. But how are they even monitoring that or how are they even staying up to date on that if they're not all talking with each other? So I can agree with this, this other financial advisor that it's important to have uh, a CPA in, in, involved in the financial planning aspect, but it's, it's not to be disconnected in a way where the financial advisor is kept in the dark. That's, that's just defeating the whole purpose of working as, together as a team. And I can't stress enough. I could go on and on and on with all these stories. We're going to talk about one here later with, with Joshua, our lead CPA with Market Tax Services, about this person that made a mistake with their capers. We were talking about Charity's listener question earlier. This is someone different besides Charity. This is someone that rolled their capers out, did some things, and was working with a tax professional. And that tax professional didn't tell her what she needed to be doing because it was with her investments side. And this is just a classic example that we'll be talking about here later in the show with Joshua of time and time again, how people have all these professionals in their life. Maybe you have a financial advisor, maybe you have a, a 401k company, or maybe you're working with your bank that are helping you with your investments. But if they're not looking at it from also a tax side, a healthcare side, and an estate planning side, they're not looking at it fourth dimensionally. I've used this example or analogy on the show before that Back to the Future 3, I think it is, where Doc Brown is looking at Marty saying, hey, Marty, we're going to hit 88 miles an hour. We're going to go across this railroad bridge. And Michael J. Fox, Marty looks at Doc and says, but the bridge isn't there. Marty, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally. The bridge is there in the future. Your retirement plan, you not just want to look at it in this moment. You also want to look at it in the future. And I'm not just talking from an investment standpoint. I'm talking about from that tax standpoint, the healthcare standpoint, and the estate planning or legacy planning standpoint. And guys, if you don't have a team that you can rely on and reach out to that's all working together and collaborating and coordinating on a plan for your benefit, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. Of course, though, you can hop on over to the website, retirehour.com. You can check out showtimes, you can subscribe to the podcast, or you can check out past episodes, or you can submit that listener question like Charity did, and we'll use that on the show. We also send you a little thank you. But more importantly, you can book your complimentary consultation with this complete retirement team across any of our offices across Kansas City or Wichita. We'd love to have that. Or I've done a couple over them, uh, the internet or the Zoom or however you say that, the phone. We, we love to meet new people and answer any questions you guys may have because we want to make sure you have a peaceful retirement and a secure retirement. That's our, that's our goal and that's our job and that's what we do with this complete retirement team. So we'll uh, come back here with Mark Benefil with Market Medicare Advisors right after the break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more right after this. Want to watch Retire Hour? Subscribe to the Retire Hour channel on YouTube by visiting youtube.com slash retire hour. While you're there, you can catch up on all the past episodes. Also, check out retirehour.com for TV showtimes near you. Welcome back into Retire Hour, the weekly show that helps you stay up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. And I've got Mark Benefil here, one of our advisors with Market Medicare Advisors, the healthcare side of this uh, this great team. You're going to talk to us about uh, Randy and Julia, right? 
Yeah, you know, um, it's amazing. It seems like every week, every month, I come up with a unique situation that um, if the person that we were talking to um, had been trying to do things on their own, it could have cost them a lot of money. And um, Randy's situation, he came to us. Uh, he had uh, retired. He's just turning 65, but he had retired like three, four years before, prior and had been taking Social Security. And he had continued to get his health care uh, through his the union he had been part of. They had okay. a great uh, um, retiree plan for him that he could continue on. So he and his wife were both getting um, insurance there. The problem was when he turned 65, he had to make some decisions on whether he was going to go on Medicare or he was going to stay on that plan from the, uh, the union. Um, and it all sounded great. He talked to the people at the union. They said, yeah, we can continue the, you can continue the plan for as long as you want. Um, there's only one problem with that. Um, the, the plan itself did not raise the level of credible care that is necessary if somebody's going to turn 65. But it was further complicated because technically it did meet the standards of credible care except for one thing. For him to be able to continue on that plan, he had to have been actively employed Ah. And because he was no longer actively employed, he could stay on the plan. And the union said, yeah, you can stay on the plan as long as you want. The problem was, if he didn't sign up for Medicare at 65, because he was no longer um, employed there, he would have been hit with a uh, Part B and Part D penalty, which is equal to 1% f per month for every month he could have been on. So if he would have figured this out, say, five or six years down the road... This could have been something he would have had no way to do unwind. He would have not known it was going on there in the background. So Medicare is something that you really need to make sure you get someone that has experience and knowledge answering your questions. Because if not, then you could wind yourself uh, up in a situation like this. Absolutely. To further complicate it, his wife was also on the plan with him. Uh, was she younger or older? She was younger. She's in her late 50s, maybe close to 60. Um, she was on the plan as well. So now that he has to go on Medicare... Now she's left without a plan because he now has to go on Medicare because he can't stay on the on the union plan anymore. Wow. So so he was older than her. So he's turning 65. He's thinking he could just keep on the union plan. Correct. But he's not working. Right. But he's thinking he can keep on that plan for his wife, who's maybe 59, 58 years. Exactly. So, so she's younger than him. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Absolutely. So in, in an analysis, what we ended up having to do was you know, we figured out where to put him on, on Medicare. Um, we then uh, connected her with uh, ACA plan, and the, basically the way it worked was we were able to save them basically about $600 a month over if they had actually stayed on that plan to begin with. So it was actually still saving them money. Absolutely. But they were just thinking maybe, well, maybe we should just stick with what we know. And, and that was actually part of their thought process. They liked their doctors. They liked the plan. Um, it was a good plan. It was a, there was a low premium, or pardon me, the premium wasn't low, but the maximum out-of-pocket expenses oh. were low. The okay. deductibles were low. Um, and they really liked it and had worked for them. And they'd been on this plan for 20-some years. And so they weren't really excited about coming off the plan, which is why they wanted to stay on. But had we not got down into that third or fourth level of qualification for the plan, um, it, w it would have been a big issue for them down the road for sure. Yeah. So fast forward, maybe. So when his wife turns 65 in five or six years, mm -hmm. he goes, no, what happens if, you, if you're if you over the age of 65 and you're applying for Medicare? Isn't there some paperwork, extra paperwork that has to be involved? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's um, a number of things. If you're over 65, if you've continued, you have to request Part B. You also have to have some documentation from the former employer as to the plan that you had. And this is probably what it went, when it would have unraveled when she turned 65 um, because she would not have been able to stay on the plan at that point. Would have had to find another and that's when it all would have fell apart. So we probably would have had about, I think, about five years worth of penalties at 1% per month. That, that adds up a lot. A lot that, that would be very, very, very expensive. And fortunately, in this instance, you were able to walk them through their situation. And you guys have a process that doesn't cost any money to go through. Right. And it doesn't cost someone any more than had they just looked on the Internet. But you right. provide this valuable resource. You're almost the original artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're that person that's across the table. I, I am. I do uh, get um, accused of being robotic sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I was going to go somewhere else with that, but that, we'll leave it <laughs> okay. there. But you know, the, the you have these team members that we can rely on because you don't know how to search for this stuff on the internet, 
and right. and you, you never gone to the internet or I don't know, maybe you have and said, hey, Mr. Internet, what do I not know? Exactly. That I need to know before it costs me a bunch of money. It doesn't work that way. No. And so you guys working as a team and, and hearing these scenarios and these stories, you also share them. So it's almost like you're getting four or five times we do. experience yeah, we have a We have a team of uh, five advisors strong right now, and we do on a regular basis. We meet every, uh, a couple times a week specifically to talk about um, cases, leaving names and things out it's for privacy, but the cases, because if I find an issue, then Corey's going to find the issue, or Trey's going to see the issue, or Grayson, or Taylor, Taylor um, all of them. And so we staff those things, we talk about them. That's how we continue to learn and add to our knowledge, because um, CMS is changing rules all the time. And we have some big rule changes that are coming up for 2025 that we'll preview uh, probably in some later episodes, some significant changes that are going to affect a lot of people. And that's just the thing. This stuff changes all the time. I mean, whether it's taxes, whether it's estate planning rules, whether it's investment or the economy, or maybe even your healthcare issues. And if someone's really not staying up to date on this, uh, they find out when they go to the doctor and something's not covered, or they go and they file their taxes and they owe a bunch of money, or God forbid they lose a spouse and something doesn't transfer sure. the right way. They learn, I guess what I'm trying to say is knowledge is cheap, experience is expensive. Absolutely. They, they, they always say, you know, if you complain about what it costs to use a uh, expert, what's it cost if you're going to use an amp, what's the cost to use an amateur, right? right? And it doesn't cost anything to, to utilize us. Um, but it costs a lot of people a lot of money when they use the amateur best friend. You know, they get together at uh, Bunko night. You know, it's not necessarily the way you want to go to get your, your lifelong health care advice. I, I don't know that I've seen anyone play Bunko in a while, but maybe I, I get your point. So, yeah. And if you guys out there that are watching or listening, if you don't have a team and you're relying on your Bunko crew to give you your advice and your health care <laughs> options, reach out at 833-888-HOUR. That's 833-888-4687, or you can hop on over to the website, retirehour.com, check out past episodes, submit a question, or book that complimentary visit with this complete retirement team in any of our offices across Kansas City or Wichita. Well, stay tuned. We'll be back with a rare treat. We've got Jenna Moody, a paralegal with Eidelman Law Firm, coming up next. Stay tuned. Got retirement questions? You can submit your financial questions to be answered by the Retire Hour team by going to retirehour.com and clicking submit a question. We may even answer your question on air. Visit retirehour.com to ask your retirement questions today. Welcome back into Retire Hour. As we almost come to the end of this week's program, we're bringing in Jenna Moody. I, did you allow Gerald to go on vacation or something? I did. I did. I'm so excited that he actually got to take a little time off. <laughs> You're so excited he's away. <laughs> I'm saying, well, he's going to watch this week's show and he's going to know. So, uh, well, we hope that Gerald's getting some uh, relaxation out there and enjoying some of this summer. And I hope ever all our listeners are doing the same thing. But you want to talk this week about Deeds? Yes. Not Mr. Deeds, the movie, right? <laughs> Not Mr. Deeds. <laughs> so what do you mean by deeds? So deeds are one of the most important things you can really plan for, you know, with estate planning. And it's so, it comes down to, it's pretty simple. Um, a, one piece of paper can really mean the difference between an easy transition of assets when somebody passes and six months of probate. So you're talking about how you title mainly real estate property. Is that yes, talking we're okay. talking about real property. Um, I, I had a client that came in and her mother had passed and her mom thought she had done everything right. You know, she had a will. She had, you know, all of her um, bank accounts and her investment accounts. They were all had payable on death beneficiaries on them. She thought she had done everything right. She had a transfer on death deed but it had not been filed with the Register of Deeds office. So close. So close, so close. You know, the rotten thing about estate planning is, is you won't be here to see that, you know, all your planning kicks in mm -hmm. and it can be, um, it can be a problem when 
you've tried to do things on your own and you get most of it done the right way, but you don't get it all done just the way it needed to be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just, it was a matter of going to the register of deeds office and making sure that it was recorded. Um, and for our Missouri listeners, it's actually the recorder of deeds. Recorder of deeds. Um, <laughs> but you know, and I actually had a woman yesterday ask me, her mother had passed away three weeks ago and she was like, you know, mom did a transfer on death deed, but what, what is the register of deeds? I don't know what that is. And so I was trying to, ha you know, help her just walk through the process of, you know, it's where deeds are recorded, the last owner of record. And anytime, you know, we're going to change ownership of a property, it has to go through the register of deeds office. It's like the, the government uh, official that keeps all that stuff and mm -hmm. and that's the one normally it's with the county but like yes. you said in Missouri and Kansas is a little different a little different but let's talk about that let's talk about in Kansas that is a, a TOD deed where you mm -hmm. do register that talk about how that process is here and then talk about the process for our, our, our listeners over on across the state line so I mean the process is about the same um, the only difference really here in Kansas is called a transfer on death deed um, but then in Missouri it's called a beneficiary deed and you just have to make sure that it's recorded with the county before your death. We, ha we have had clients in the past that have brought them in and they thought they could go to the register of deeds after the person died and register it. And that's not how it works. A transfer on death or a beneficiary deed cannot be filed after the person dies. But if they have a power of attorney, they can go and act. No, no it doesn't work that way. No, that's not how that works. The <laughs> power of attorney is officially like when you pass away, it's null and void. Yeah. So. so this is um, this is probably something that happens quite frequently where people have either looked on the Internet how to do their estate plan or they've mm -hmm. taken advice from a friend. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it does work out or sometimes it does uh, end up achieving the objective they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, there are either missteps or uh, typos or they didn't do something right or a technicality mm -hmm. and that's what happened with this situation that you're talking about someone's trying to do it afterwards yeah. that's a pretty big technicality yeah. uh, technically you're supposed to do that before the person died yeah and now you know unfortunately daughter you know is living with mom in the house and now mom is or the daughter is stuck living in a home she can't really afford and so she's got to wait six months for it to, to go through probate for it to go through probate before she can sell it and so, so she's got to pay the property taxes, but she doesn't have the money to do that. Yeah. She's got to pay the utilities, but she probably doesn't have the money to do that. She's got to maybe do some upkeep on the house or just general mowing the yard, doing mm -hmm. the things you got to do to take care of the house. She can't afford any of that. And this thing, not, not to mention, it's not going through probate, but there's going to be an expense to that. Yes. Yeah. And so this is why it's so critical that you don't try and do it yourself on your estate plan because you can really make some critical errors here and you're not going to be alive or around to say, hey, that's not what I wanted to do there. That This needs to go this way or this needs to go to this person. Mm -hmm. And that's why we work together as a team because a lot of times the financial advisor is the one that's getting met with probably the most frequently. Mm -hmm. But I'm probably the most ill-equipped to handle all these extra other needs that people have, whether it's tax planning or tax preparation or tax consequences, healthcare options, or estate planning topics. Absolutely, absolutely, and we are happy to help. And that's why we bring in you guys into the mix and having you guys in house and having having you connected to us and where you guys can come ask us questions because you ask us questions, say, hey, in this situation, what's this? And we can work together as a team to help people not have these terribly costly mistakes in their estate plan. Absolutely, I had a, a gentleman yesterday that he asked me, he's like, well, what happens when Gerald retires? And I was like, it's fine. We're not going anywhere. We got market advisory group. We, you know, we're Doug, we'll we've got other, we're, we got Doug, we're we got working other on attorneys. a couple other people's. Yeah, we're, 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 we've got that handled, but that, but that's a question. That's a real important question for people out there that are working with someone that just is a one person shop. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, those small art firms, you know, it's a one, one person and they retire and then they're like, who do I go to now? Normally they'll hand it off to someone. But what I've, I've experienced through my career is normally the, un, the unplanned departures, mm -hmm. the, the sudden death or or, or someone gets sick or something happens to their situation uh, with, with their family. And it, it does leave that person out there uh, in the lurch. And if you guys don't have a team that you can rely on, reach out right now, 833-888-HOUR. 
or that's 833-888-4687 or hop on over to that website, retirehour.com. Check out past episodes or submit a question. We'll be answering a, a listener question here again here uh, after the break with Joshua Sakura, our lead CPA. But if you guys need answers, you don't want to wait until disaster strikes. You want to make sure you have that team in place beforehand. We'll stay tuned. We'll be right back with more right after this. Want to take Retire Hour with you on the go? Subscribe to Retire Hour wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Subscribe and you'll be the first to get new episodes every week. Go to retirehour.com to get the link to your favorite podcast provider. Welcome back into Retire Hour, the weekly show that helps you stay up to date on all things retirement. And as we round out this week's show, we always save the best for last. <laughs> well, thanks. No pressure. <laughs> But as a financial advisor, you know, I pull you in the conference room of CPA a lot. And I don't understand. Wait, I thought it was because you just like me. Well, well, yeah. Oh, wow. I'll we'll have to rethink all this. <laughs> Do you need some time? I might. Okay. We'll talk about that afterwards. Good deal. But as a financial advisor, I can't really fathom how effective other people are doing it if they don't have a CPA in, 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 in the conference room. Right. I mean, we've talked, you and I have just conversated about this a lot, where how do other advisors do this if they can't address these things? Um, and, and to be frank, I have no idea. And, and you know, this is, a, we're going to call this gal Jessica. This mm -hmm. is someone I met with. I uh, can't remember which class she came to, but she came to one of our classes and she came in and she goes, I need help. I said, okay, t tell me what's going on, Jessica. She goes, well, I'm a retired uh, Kansas employee. I've been doing this, and I'm not going to say what her job is because I don't want to get too specific sure. here because this is a really unfortunate situation. She had access to this Capers pension, mm -hmm. like maybe Charity's talking about in her listener question. Yeah. Charity's li listener question goes, was, when do I pull from Capers? And not only to factor in all the financial considerations, but there's a lot of tax consequences or, or considerations that go here, right? That's right. So, so capers like um, a lot of states with government pensions, the capers doesn't get taxed uh, at the state level. In federal, you still pay taxes on them, but but when you take that out um, on your state taxes, you get to subtract that out of your income. So that's on the pension side. But if you roll a lump sum out of that pension, if you roll it out, then if you're just taking that cash in hand, kind of how Larry was talking about, then yeah, that's going to be a lot of income, meaning a lot of taxes all at once. And I suspect you're not having withholding set up on that. So then six months later, roughly, you're gonna have a, a big tax bill that's gonna be a lot less fun than getting that money. So speaking of tax bills, Jessica, who again, is someone that's talking to me, she goes, I need help. Mm -hmm. She has been retired now for three or four years taking money out of that lump sum pot of capers mm -hmm. that she rolled out of her pension but she commingled that with her other IRA from another job. Yeah, yeah. And so she knew that if she rolled that pension portion out from Capers, she knew that it wasn't taxed for Kansas income tax purposes. So she'd not been paying income taxes on those withdrawals. Kansas Department of Revenue, KDR, they say, whoa, you owe us all the back taxes on that money. Yeah, yeah. And the folks who are watching us on YouTube just watched me wince as you started telling this story. Um, because, yeah, because she co-mingled the funds, she lost that special tax treatment at the state level. So now those dollars that should have been free of state taxes are not. And there's no way to stuff that tax genie back in the <laughs> bottle. Um, and so that's why when we work with people who want to, to pull out some money out of capers, we make sure that that goes into an account where all the dollars in that account are just from, from capers or, or whatever government pension. Um, because so long as we can show, uh, the department of revenue that those dollars are just from capers, then we can retain that, that tax treatment. And so when we've done this for clients, I've collected the paperwork at that time so that when we do file that return, showing distributions out of that account, we've got that paperwork ready to go. So when the Department of Revenue sends us that letter saying, hey, what are you doing here? 
we can say, well, look, this is all just the caper's money. This is okay. And then, all right, that's fine. Go ahead. But Jessica wasn't working with us. Now, Jessica was working with a tax preparer, uh -huh. and her tax preparer knew that she shouldn't be paying taxes on it, but her tax preparer hadn't followed the investment history right. because they're just doing taxes. That's right. That's right. And that's the nice thing about when we work together is that we've got that investment history. I mean, I'm there making that investment history with you as we're making these, these plans with the client so that when we do the taxes, we know the history, we know the context for the client, so then we can put the return together appropriately. And we work together as this team and we collaborate mm -hmm. for, for lack of a better word, but we're, we're always con conferring with each other. Maybe that's yeah. a good way to say it yeah. on, Hey, well, uh, if this happens, then what's this? And that's not something where if, if someone out there, uh, maybe they have someone that's helping them with their taxes, they help have a financial advisor. They're not talking. Uh -uh. No, they're, they're not. And then so much gets lost in there. Whereas when you meet with somebody and we start th that conversation kind of goes over there, you say, tell them to stop, you bring me in so that we can then collaborate with them and listen to what they're saying, build that context and better help them go forward. Because taxes, when you're working and saving for retirement is one thing and taxes really are quite different in retirement because of social security, the retirement, all, all those different. Because you have all these different income streams all coming together at one point. When you're working, you know, maybe you have a couple W-2s, maybe you have a couple other little things going on. Typically, you don't have a lot of different things going on all at once. When you're in retirement, that does happen. And so we work together as this team to make sure that as tax laws change, mm -hmm. as people's situations change throughout their lives, we can we can help educate them and make them aware of things before they do things that cost them a bunch of money. That's right. That's right. And so it's great when people send us in questions like this so we can touch on these topics. But as Larry kind of brought up and as we're kind of talking about now, there's lots of different nuances that go into this so that while it's great asking, you know, having someone ask us these questions in these situations, it's better if they go make an appointment with us. And so we can talk about these in more detail, get those nuances out of the out of the person we're meeting with and talk about it in, in that detail to help them make plans. And if people want to meet with us and have these conversations, they should give us a call 833 833- 888-4687. Go out to our website, uh, retirehour.com. They can book uh, appointments, uh, book an appointment with us there. They can go to a workshop, hear some more of these details, and find out, you know, how we can help. They, ca <laughs> they can. I'm hearing the control room laugh because you're taking it out. Yeah. We didn't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> they can uh, they can see past episodes, hear how we've addressed this for other people in the past, and um, we just can help them out there. So that's really all the time we have for this week. Um, we'll see you again here next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>